Hello, hello, hello. Wait for the camera to focus. Okay, cool. So, um, today's video is going to be about um, the functionalist idea of strain theory for the sociology, crime and deviance A2 exam. Um, so, Merton is a lovely man who expands on Durkheim's idea of anime. So anime being that state of normlessness, not too sure what to do with themselves. Um, and he basically says how people engage in deviant behaviour when they're unable to achieve um, socially approved goals by legitimate means. For example, um, they're not able to get that amazing doctor job because um, they're not rich enough to get the materials to revise and get the grades. So they feel the strain and they turn towards illegitimate means, for example, crime, stealing money, in order to still achieve those legitimate goals that are shared by the culture and society. So Merton explains um, this strain theory using two elements. So, structural factors and cultural factors. So the structural factors are society's unequal opportunity structure. So that's just the form of society. Um, Durkheim speaks on meritocracy, how people have to work hard in order to get that really good job. It's, However, so functionalists do talk about how society is equal, but they also can mention how it just can be unequal in those sort of respects. So, cultural factors are the strong emphasis on success goals and the weaker emphasis on using legitimate means to achieve them. So, society these days... They're terrible for it, aren't they? The media are just posing all these, oh, look at me, I'm so beautiful, look, I'm a model, amazing. Um, however, they don't tell us how to get there. Uh, they don't say, oh, you have to do the right thing in order to get there. As long as you get there, you're fine. Um, so, these goals that our culture encourages individuals to achieve. So, um, deviance... Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I went ahead a bit too soon. Deviance is the result of a strain between two things so there's structural factors and cultural factors so the goals that a culture encourages individuals to achieve and then what the institutional structure of a society allows them to achieve legitimately so let's go easy inequality causes deviance and anime is a temporary result of social upheaval the culture is society's shared goals and society puts pressure on people. However, people are in different positions of the social structure. However, 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 different pe different relationships with the value consensus because they're in different positions of society. Um, so if you've got no money, no network in order to get to those high places, you're not going to accept the value consensus. You're going to reject it and try and find illegitimate means of achieving these goals that everyone wants because you've been brought up in the same society, but you're just on different levels of the social structure. So if you do have money, you do have a network of people how, who you can talk to and get into those positions um, to easily achieve those goals. Um, you will accept um, the institutional means because it will be easy for you. Um, so the poor person feels the strain, but they have been socialised the same as the rich people. So of course they want the same goals. So that is basically my simple version of it. Looking at the textbook, you look in and you're like, oh my goodness, dear God, I can't remember all of that. So I help myself out and make little mind maps. So basically simplifying all of the information, easy for me to remember and remember and just recall it in the exam. So there are five responses um, in order to achieve these goals. So let me get my other piece of paper. So there is conformity. This is when you accept the goals and you use the institutional means to get it. So these rich people, they can go into society after of getting an amazing degree because they've got the network and they've got the money. Innovation, accepting the goals but rejecting the institutional means. This is the cheeky way. This is the deviant route. So for example, Stuart Howardson duped his family to believe he was a Scotland Yard officer 
but he was a fraud. So this is crimes such as fraud. So you're wanting to get those same goals, however you just you just don't like the institutional means in order to get there. Ritualism, this is quite sad actually because you reject the goals but go along with the institutional means. So you're like, okay, I know I'm never going to get there but hey ho, this is how society runs, I'm just going to do the same thing over and over again but never get there. Um, and deviant behaviour results from being strongly socialised to conform to expected behaviour. You're just going through the motions in a ritual, not aiming for anything higher. Which is really sad. Really sad. And then there's also retreatism. So that is where you reject both the goals and the means. Um, and this, these are the dudes that descend into alcoholism, drug abuse, all that sadness. Because they just reject society. Um, and then rebellion. So this is when you could form your subcultures. So you're replacing the cultural goals and the institutional means with new ones that meet your criteria um, and your values in a particular group or culture. Yeah! That is Merton's strain theory. Then there's also another beautiful um, functionalist beauty called Hershey. And there is, he talks about four controls. Uh, producing conformity so he speaks on social bonds and conformity and what stops people from committing crime let's talk about this so there is four controls producing conformity number one attachment so attachment is when you're under control by what people think about them comes from developing strong emotional bonds. So for example, if you're attached to people and you care about what they think about you, so I care about what my mum thinks about me. I don't want her to think I'm a silly poo, so I'm not gonna do silly poo things in order to get that respect still from her. I'm not gonna commit crime because she means a lot to me because I'm attached to her and we have that strong emotional bond. Number two, commitment. Um, so this is when you invest time in education or a business so you're less likely to deviate. So you're committed to a certain thing. For example, I was committed to the Macbeth play back in December. So just because of this commitment, uh, commitment I wasn't going to deviate away from it just because it was my thing. I didn't want to lose it from doing deviant behaviour. Yeah. And then number three. Involvement. I usually find commitment or involvement are difficult to split apart. So, I'm thinking involvement more in time management things. If you're involved in a certain activity, for example, when I was younger, I used to swim a lot um, and I was involved in galas and things. I was involved an awful lot in swimming. So, because my time was took up in the swimming baths, I'm not going to have any other time available in order to steal steal that bank. Well, I don't steal the bank, I steal the money from the bank. So just because of that involvement. And finally number four, belief. So we have a common value system which asserts a need to respect authority and law. We've all been socialised to respect the law. If we don't, we're going to get put in prison. It's just our belief system. And we all have that social solidarity and that value consensus with our norms and values. So because of our beliefs, we're going to conform to it. And we're not going to be evil because we've so been socialised not to be. So, over two spans of two videos, I've spoke about Durkheim and his functionalist view of crime. And I've also spoke on the other functionalist route of strain theory and Hershey's conformity and social bonds preventing us from committing crime. Whew! Right, I'm ready for this exam. I love you. I love it. Well, not yet. I still need to do past papers and stuff. I hope that was alright for you and I hope you learned a little bit of stuff. But yes, enjoy the rest of your day. Happy revising!